Hello guys and welcome to episode 48 of my Total War Thrones of Britannia playthrough playing as East Engler on very hard difficulty. We are now the North Sea Empire and we're going to be taking Fusiford first of all. We have quite a large battle actually uh, between our Anglian champions and, and a lot of male uh, Hersia swordsmen. Uh, but it hasn't phased us before so it shouldn't this time around as well. Let's go ahead and manually fight this on the battle map. One thing that definitely uh, will make a difference is what sort of settlement we have. It looks like a walled settlement. Maybe? If it's not, it, it doesn't particularly matter, but that would be nice actually. No, it's not. Okay. Um, we will wait. Let's try. Since our archers are better than theirs, I think. We'll just put two either side of the gate as usual. So no need to move my dudes too far. Pretty much ready to go already. Get my cavalry back here. We do actually have a 200 strength Warlord's Companions. That's pretty nuts. Go ahead and start the battle. Nice. One thing I did actually just notice looking at these guys is that some are shorter than others, it looks like. Yeah, they're like sort of different sizes. That's actually really cool. I've never noticed that before. I've scaled down the models slightly on some of them so they vary in height. Are we being attacked by flaming arrows? I don't think we are. One thing that is strange though is that they've kind of like spread out the units. I mean, I've complained before that they don't sort of do a three-tier defense or just like a defense at the end where it'd be easier to funnel units. But um, when they just have them spread out randomly, it's kind of stupid. Now, our general is a 10-star general, so we do have the, uh, the metal ability, which improves melee skill, accuracy, and morale for our ground forces for a short amount of time. It only has uh, one use, I think. Marchers, the enemy approaches. But it can be very good in the initial engagements. Because that extra melee skill just makes you do so much more damage. We did a reasonable amount of damage there onto those archers. One thing I am going to do, I think we're just going to move forwards like this and we'll go skirmish off guard mode on and then just target the archers and then if they can't fire at the archers I'll just pick new targets. Although with the towers at the walls we should be running up with our other forces now. Let's go ahead and do that. Get my general up here. No point in him having a 200 retinue if he is not going to use it. Um, I'll also target these archers on the right actually. Let's go ahead and do that, because otherwise these guys are going to get shot in the back. Where were the archers that I was firing at? I think they might just get engaged anyway. Nice. How big is this gallantry thing? Uh, it's not that big. For some reason, we can't target those guys very well. I guess that's alright. Get 
Come on, let's just use this before I forget. I'll have the general move up towards the right. The spearmen come up. These guys are able to fire easily. I feel like these ones are just kind of blocked by something. Maybe just the wall or the buildings. Their archers actually aren't as long range as ours, I don't think. That's uh, more like it. Okay, right, let's uh, make sure these guys are charging in. These guys, the buffer's worn off. I'm sure we did a lot of damage while that was going on. Uh, my general can actually just kill off these Thrall Spearmen. Our general is under attack. Nice, we're doing a good amount of damage here. if these guys are doing anything particularly helpful but we'll shoot these viking skirmishers so that they don't throw javelins on our backs or oh, oh, ouch it's not good just pretend to charge them so they move if they don't move we can just actually attack them How irritating is that? Just make sure that these guys can still fire at them. But yeah, they're just going to keep running away from us, I think. My general just being attacked for free here, which is fantastic. My archer's really not doing a very good job of attacking at the moment. Alright, oh, there's another unit. Of course there is. Okay, let's have my archers come over here. The is we'll start to engage these Viking archers. And we crush these ones on the walls, which is good. We can have my general now come back and not have to worry about them as much. Put them into the shield wall again. Great. Right, once those archers are dealt with, and those archers as well, we will um, get them inside to fire on the enemy general. Get my cab inside. Oh, these uh, axe freemen, we can take them on with these swordsmen. Stops them wasting so much time. Our hidden units have been discovered. I've just got to go and run down these archers. Just irritating me now. 
and we'll get my archers inside in the meantime. Well, they just got completely trampled. Lovely. Alright, let's bring them back to the centre so they don't get shot to death by the tower. Same deal over here. Bring back to the centre. Another unit. Another unit of skirmishers. Let's go run those down. My marchers are inside, so that's something. One thing I do need to do is, is send a unit to, to help out these axe freemen. I might get my generals to just get involved. Right, those javelin men, they were on 60. Oh, just look how it just counts down when, when they get trampled. Like, I understand that they're missile units, but still. I need to get line of sight onto their general. My archers can fire away. Like the rain of, of fire coming down onto them. We'll just have those charge in the front. These guys can just wheel around and get behind the general. These are just spear herd men, so that's job done. Lovely. 407 kills on one of those Anglian champions. They always do exceptionally well in these uh, siege battles. Probably with the help of the, uh, the level 10 general ability. Go ahead and occupy that. Thank you very much. Ringers of Ragnarok. Oslak. He's only aged 35 and he's already level 10 command. Beautiful. Right, I guess uh, we probably want to just go for loyalty, maybe. Yeah, let's do loyalty. We want our general to remain loyal. We don't have enough cash to upgrade both of them. Interesting. You can rely on us. Does that mean we don't have enough cash to just fix these guys up? No, we don't. Wow. Okay. Another settlement with minus 110% corruption. Pretty sure we have the only technology that stops it. Yeah, minus 10% corruption in all provinces. Minus 110%. It's ridiculous. It's like, what's the point in conquering more provinces? other than just for the sake of having them. Like, there isn't really. So, it's kind of really dumb, but... I guess we're late game, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, what a pain in the ass that is. Maybe they should just, like, raise the limit on the governors based on the amount of settlement you hold. Or maybe just remove the cap entirely. I know that I saw a mod for that, but I think that might just genuinely be a good idea. Because you can have an unlimited amount of generals. And there are downsides to having too many. In a sense that if you have a lot of family members or a lot of faction members, you ha struggle with loyalty issues because you don't have enough estates to keep everyone happy. 
So yeah, I think there's like ways to balance it that, that don't require you to have like a hard cap on governors. Because the whole corruption thing seems really stupid. Like why would why would corruption ever be like a hundred percent? Just like hundred and ten percent for that matter. I don't know. It's just a bit dumb in my opinion. Let me know if you agree. <laughs> Right, in the meantime, I think we're just going to leave the rest of my forces where they are, so um, let's cancel that, uh, we don't care about that, and we don't care about that. Okay, let's move on. Okay, we're going to come under siege again, same place as before. Interesting. I think there was an island that was taken by the Norse. Okay, these are Viking rebels. We could go ahead and get rid of those. That's interesting. Yeah, let's uh, jump onto the water. Actually, that's probably a bad idea. Mainly because uh, attrition, for starters, but also just because we're low on supplies. Hmm. Why are we all of a sudden getting 10,494? Ah, I think that was like uh We had a, a negative event, didn't we? That was causing us so much um, corruption issues. That's what it was. Completely forgot about that, so apologies if you guys have mentioned it in the comments and I hadn't seen it. Um, right. Well, let's just continue with that. And since we do have lots of cash, we can probably afford ourselves a new army. Right, we'll go plus two on the command there, that's nice. Um, he can actually just go ahead and take uh, Linz now. We'll go ahead and sack that and take it. It's going to give us a very profitable settlement or uh, province. Yeah, I think I might put one of my dudes there. Like, the guy in East Riding, now only minus 60%. Well, they're saying that. Let's just take the guy out of uh, Gwynedd. That one's a lot less. Yeah, we'll take the one out of Gwynedd. Uh, so, Thurbrand, we need to move him to... Uh, which one is it? Brega. Okay. from Gwynedd to Brega. Uh, let's get her brand Brega. Lovely. Right, and that will sort out the corruption in the next turn. In the meantime... I think what I'm going to do is maybe upgrade the tool workshop. I think we're going to get rid of... I guess if we have a, um, like a governor here, we can probably just get away with not having the corruption building, reduction building, and just instead have like a water melt that would increase overall production of the farms and stuff. Since all of the farms are like almost max upgraded. That seems like a pretty good idea. And there was like a random island I saw that got um, taken by... Oh, we already figured that out, didn't we? It was up here. Yeah, whoops. Never mind. Let's go back down south. And we'll figure out where we want to go with this army. I think we're probably better off uh, maybe heading towards like 
uh, Glen de Loch, just in case these guys don't take it. The Ayamuma. Yeah, we'll start moving up that way. It's fine if they do take it. Upgrade that dude. We also need to just fix up these. It's fine. Happiness is okay. Have a look at Orm. Right, we have another... Kind of dodgy us. army. Or dodgy battle, sorry. On our Wait hands. I think we're going to start with the Thunder and Lightning this time. They will be the ones to actually initiate the battle, so we get a little bit of an advantage on the battlefield initially. Okay, let's uh, control the large army and fight this on the battle map. Alright, this time around we're not fighting up the hill, but across the hill, which is quite good. I do have four units of Berserkers, I believe. Yep. Mailed Huskars, Jarls Huskars. Oh, the Mailed Huskars are actually upgrades. How do our Berserkers compare to theirs? Theirs have 77 melee skill. That is ridiculous. I mean, ours have more morale and armor and shield, but the melee skill on that. The same for all of their units, really. There's a very impressive melee skill. Go ahead and start the battle. We will wait for it to be dry. Lovely. And we're going to deploy all the way up here, of course. Uh, our army is coming in at the our other army is coming in at the bottom of the hill, which is kind of irritating. So, yeah. I'm not quite sure what I want to do about that. Because if we shift everything up here, for example... I don't, I don't know if that's a good idea. Eh, yeah, what's the worst that could happen? A reinforcements have arrived. Kind of skirmish put on guard mode. I really wish like the garrison reinforcements didn't come in at all. But is there a way for me to like turn off the armies? I think there might have been a way to choose which armies reinforce and which don't. Anyway, we have ourselves some extra units, most of which we aren't using. Uh, these guys can all just run up here. I think what I might do is just speed it up. Because as long as I'm not attacking them with range forces, right, my men can just run into position. We can just have them stand around until they're fresh again, and then we can attack. That'd be the best way to do it, I think. For example, these guys, they're going to get winded and tired, like, running up this hill. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. As long as I'm coming down onto this army. Let's line up those like so. Okay. What else do we have to move? Just the uh, the swordsman, I think, on the left flank here. And then we've got a couple of spearmen. Okay, nice. Let's uh, control group those. And uh, we will carry on down the hill. Lovely. Actually, I should probably wait before doing this. 
Yeah, we will wait. We will just go back into position. All right. So we've got these dudes coming up. And uh, I can just have these, like, hold one flank. This guy, Orm, he has 190 men under his command, so... Nothing to scoff at. Will definitely come in handy against their unit composition. These berserkers, especially rank 7 berserkers, are probably the scariest part of this lineup. I think we can take out their cav relatively easily. But yeah, those guys are exhausted. The rest of my dudes, they are fresh again. Nearly there, though. We'll have that advantage moving forwards. Alright, let's uh, actually start moving forwards here. Give these other dudes a little bit of time to catch their breath. This is going to trigger the battles very shortly. Um, in a sense that, uh, yeah, they're going to start coming towards us. Lovely. Um, oh, we did get attacked on the uh, left flank here. Let's make sure my spearmen latch onto those. Um, what are my archers firing at? Because we, we should be firing at their skirmishes. We are, which is good. Get rid of those. I'm even tempted to target those mailed archers. And I might put some rounds, actually, just put more into the Viking skirmishes there. Um, it's likely that we're going to be able to just wheel around and basically hit their entire force in the back, which would be nice. Um, I might be tempted to just shoot these guys to death. Lovely. That's uh, pretty much job done. <laughs> See, they flee before our okay. fight. Oh, not bad. Oh, we can crush that right flank. I might even be able to kill a general because of that. Which would be really nice. Um, right, meanwhile, time to hit their ranged forces. Uh, that's our right flank, the Great Axeman getting savaged there. To uh, fire into these Jarl's Huskals. We're actually being charged in the back, we are, by the fucking skirmishers. Uh, that is some Dane Law male spearmen. Oh, we do need to have these guys actually engaged, that would be handy. <laughs> um, my cav can probably go finish off those ranged forces that are left behind. So let's uh, use those. The battle is turning in our favor. 
Oh, crush them over here. Lovely. Alright, time to swing across. Alright, we should actually probably target these berserkers which are just running around like headless chickens. Uh, we should maybe also target these male tails here, but uh, actually I can just get the cabs to kill those. Fine. The rest of the forces can just continue on to the berserkers. Alright, let's just get everyone involved there. Rush into the back of those dudes. Their general here is surrounded. He is a very high level unit, but uh, we have our own warlords companions that are pretty damn good there. That's helpful. Um, but those berserkers, they are taking a lot of damage, which is nice. See, they flee before our might. Horsemen. Horsemen. Ready. The troops are routing. It's a rout. Our warriors flee the battle. He's running now. Oh, the axemen. Fair enough. There's two berserkers left on one of them. Wow, those berserkers, they certainly fight to the death, don't they? I'm saying that, these, uh, these few ran away. They did a lot of damage. It should be a relatively convincing victory though. I'm just hoping it doesn't class as a Pyrrhic victory because, again, War Fervor issues. Um, we are very positive on our War Fervor, but losing that is not great. If I, if I don't have to, I don't want to. Well, that's good. The enemy general's dead there. Uh, these guys should be engaged with those Berserkers. These Berserkers are pretty much surrounded. And almost killed off. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, stop these guys from firing. Okay. And that's pretty much it. Alright. Job done. Speed it up. Kill that last guy. Ridiculous! How how long these berserkers hold on for? <laughs> we'll just use the time to run down extra units. There we go. Close victory. Nice. Didn't quite class as a uh, period victory, which is good. Really good. Yeah, those berserkers. You can see just how much damage they do. Fortunately, our archers really paid off in that one. Killed a lot of forces. A lot of their range forces before they did too much damage. Right, and we will take on those warriors. That leaves us in a pretty nice position. And with that, it has unfortunately been my time. So, we are going to uh, move on again and uh, maybe destroy another Norse army. We do have one up here at uh, Koinir. I think there was one a little further down hanging about. Not entirely sure where. But uh, it will be good for us to, to destroy as many as we can, which would allow then the other nations in Ireland to take back land as well as ourselves. So, yeah, it's in interesting stuff. Uh, one turn until our extra income uh, from the market is available and uh, then we'll be looking at a lot of cash uh, maybe, maybe another new army uh, etc so either way hopefully you guys enjoyed it thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one goodbye